Hi, fashion industry sketching. I wanted to take a second to run through the um, the 50 sketches and the reduction process, the 50, 25, 12 reduction process, um, where we can help um, narrow down the collection and choose your favorite pieces that way. So I'm going to use my own project from this quarter as a example. So after a couple weeks of process and design developments, I had ended up at these 50 sketches. Um, and I did take the time to fill them all with texture, which wasn't, I don't know if my teacher expected us to do that. She had mentioned that we should do it for some of them, um, but then I wasn't sure. I felt like I should just do it for all of them. Um, and I made these in a pretty robust way in the original illustrations, which I'll get to in a second, so that I can change any of these textiles right now. Um, so I put all of the sketches, I saved them as TIFFs so they have a transparent background. Um, I saved, I uh, put them all on one page and shrunk them down for my own sanity so I could see them all at once and I started removing ones that I didn't like. Um, so I started crossing out ones I wasn't interested in and circling ones um, that I was interested in, which um, was an exciting process. It's always good to edit. It always feels good. So I was left with 24 illustrations, which would be aiming for 24 or 25, um, cutting it down by half. Um, and at this point, what, um, what you would do is you would remix these illustrations, you would change textiles, you would combine some. I did kind of categorize these into kind of two sub-collections. Um, I was kind of thinking this top one is a collection and this bottom one is a collection, so we're looking for like variety in um, lengths of garments, variety in skirts, pants, jumpsuits, types of garments, um, variety in textures and textiles. Uh, I'm only using a couple a couple cotton fabrics here and then I'm going to be knitting my own textiles so I felt like rendering the fabrics was really important. Uh, so from here I narrowed it down to my favorite ten, uh, 12 illustrations um, which were some of the later illustrations that I made and I arranged them all onto a page and honestly I um, what I should do now is go through and add shadow to all of them but um, I'm not even sure if these are going to be my final illustrations or or maybe I will be redrawing these. Um, I am required to make four of these garments this semester, so I went ahead and I chose my favorite four. I love these, uh, but I think that I'm going to have to change my textiles to get um, at least in one of them, to get more of this warm brown in here. Um, and this is still a tiff, um, so I can't change the textile here, uh, but on my original illustration, these files are huge, which is why I saved them as tiffs with transparent backgrounds. Um, on my original illustration, I've made these so that the pattern layers are preserved. I never rasterized these layers. They're still editable. If I double click on them, I can choose a new pattern. Or actually, my new favorite way to adjust the patterns, if you have Photoshop 2020, you can, instead of, um, normally we would like click here, and that used to be the only way we could access all of the patterns we had defined. Um, in spring 2020, I have, or I organized the, uh, my pattern panel into folders um, with all of the textiles that I might use for this collection. So I can just click on medium brown cotton and this instantly changes to the medium brown cotton. Um, so it's, uh, and then I would have to save this again in order to update this, um, favorite four illustration, uh, but I think that that would bring a lot more balance to the collection. Um, 
So my favorite way to get to this point where I have, um, where I have the garments or, or I have the texture and I'm drawing with it or painting with it essentially is, um, if we turn all of these off for a second, if I just have my fabric, um, and I make a, a new layer, I'm going to start drawing with any color on that layer. Um, and I'm going to choose a nice brush. I like ultimate inking thick and thin. Um, and I'll just start filling in casually right now. And then you can take any repeating pattern uh, you have in your pattern panel and with one click it automatically applies the texture to the garment and then we can try out a few different ones and we still have to double click here to adjust the scale. Uh, but that's my, my new favorite way to make patterns and then if we want to keep adding more of this texture we can just keep keep drawing on that layer um, and we can add a new layer and get another texture in there. And then you go in with a smaller brush back on layer 17, right? The pattern is being clipped to the layer that we're drawing on. Um, if this didn't have the little arrow there, if you move it to a different section, it will, um, it will end up taking over the whole page, right? Um, so we need to uh, right click and choose create clipping mask if that ever happens and um, you, things will be clipped back to that layer. So anything, any pixel that you put onto um, in this case layer 17 or like your base image layer will get the textile on it. Uh, so let's make a quick repeating pattern out of this. I already have a felted wool pattern, but this will be a quick review of making textures in Photoshop um, from real textiles. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to crop the whole image and we're going to make sure that delete cropped pixels is checked in your properties panel. You want to get rid of any of the, ex the extra pixels on the outside of the cropped image, um, otherwise this technique won't work. And we want to choose, you know, a good amount of area, but it should be evenly lit across the page. Um, so if you have any shadows on your page, you should try to crop them out. It'll be easier in the long run. So right now, if we defined this pattern, you would be able to see a hard edge, a hard seam in the pattern um, where the pixels don't line up on the top and the bottom. It would look like an obvious tile. Um, so we are going to address the, the seam of the tile by going to filter other offsets. And what this does is, especially when wrap, when wrap around is checked, what this does is it, um, it brings pixels as, as it moves the image to the right and then it, as images, as pixels go off this edge, they wrap around and they come on this edge. So in this way we're able to see the seam here and you can kind of see it, it's pretty subtle in this image, this cross. And I can actually click and drag on the center seam and uh, try to get it centered or you can adjust um, with the sliders or with the pixels um, until this cross, hopefully you guys can see it, this cross is in the center. Let me make this bigger. There, now we can see the cross. Um, so we are going to select the center seam 
and uh, make sure that it looks uh, a lot less seamless by going to edit uh, fill and we're going to choose content aware fill um, so I'm just I'll select the horizontal seam first and what we don't want to do is touch the edge right now the edge is seamless because of the way we used filter other offset in order to wrap the pixels around um, so if we put if we changed any of the pixels here they would no longer line up with their counterparts on the other side um, so I've selected the center seam and I'm going to go to edit fill uh, content aware fill is the selection we want to make from this uh, dialog box and hit OK. And it automatically tries to replace that section with pixels that make sense for the rest of the image. And it's normally pretty good at it with really textural images like this. So now I'm selecting the vertical seam. There's really just this little section and this little section left. Um, and we'll again go to edit fill and we'll choose content aware fill. Uh, and now we have a pretty seamless image. It seems like there's maybe too much density over here. Um, and what I can do is use the clone tool. The clone tool copies pixels from one section and you can kind of brush them on to another section. So if I try to use the brush right now, it'll give me an error message. It says you have to alt click to define a source point. And so I'm going to define a source point in kind of a less dense area that I want to copy and, and fill over here. So I can choose again, copy this less dense area. And just add a little bit of hollowness to, to this pattern. Um, you could have used the clone tool to get rid of the entire seam if you wanted to. Uh, so this should be a seamless pattern right now. We know the edges are seamless because we went to filter other offsets and wrapped the pixels around. And now we know um, that the center has no seam because we just removed it. So we are going to go to edit define pattern. And it asks me what we want to name the pattern. So I will call this filtered roll two. And if we look at our patterns property panel right now, or our patterns panel, um, we can see felted wool 2 was added there. And if I wanted to, I could adjust like where it was sitting and what folder it was in. Um, and we could apply that to a, um, a garment, right? If we wanted to, we could make a, um, I'm going to make a new layer on this page. Um, and we can start start drawing just with any color um, because the color ends up getting covered by the pattern in this technique. And then we can choose felted wool too and it automatically applies and then double click on the pattern layer pattern fill thumbnail here and adjust the scale. That's pretty good a little bit um, a little bit repetitive but uh, I like I'm liking how it's looking overall and um, if we wanted to this image is looking kind of cool compared to the wools I have in here. We could adjust the um, the color of this with an adjustment layer. Color balance and just warm it up a little bit. Okay, and now we can choose edit. Uh, we got to be on the background layer. Edit, define pattern. Um, I think you just have to be on an image layer, not necessarily the background layer. Um, and we can check out how that looks on on this. We can. Um, my favorite way to do it lately is to just have the layer selected and then use the pattern fill to adjust. Um, Yeah, there we go. So that ended up being a little bit warmer and we can compare between the two of them. Um, 
And what's great is if I don't think I need this one anymore, I can just trash that and I can really organize my patterns um, nice and easily. Uh, and I just think it's a great way to organize your patterns. Um, and you can also, just like most of these um, organizational libraries in Photoshop, you can adjust like how you view the images. Um, and uh, what I end up doing in order to back this up, because this doesn't this doesn't move from Photoshop to Photoshop, um, like if I were to go use a different computer. Um, in order to back this up, I always add this graphic to my library. Um, so I know that this is one single straight repeat tile. Um, so I save all of them in here, um, all of my single repeat tiles. So I've learned you have to select both the background and the color balance layer if you want it to be included in your library. Um, and I love the um, Adobe Creative Cloud Library because uh, it automatically, as long as you're logging into the same Adobe account, when we add a graphic, it will be available on any, um, on any laptop. Uh, so I use this all the time. Hopefully this information was helpful. Um, those are like my favorite ways of coloring right now um, with texture in Photoshop, which I think can create really interesting illustrations. So uh, please, you know, consider being creative, doing digital collages for this final collection. You know, you can do whatever you want. You don't have to feel limited to traditional forms of illustration, you know, and we have um, a couple weeks now to develop these and really narrow down the um, the illustrations and make sure they're top of the line. Uh, the collection is not going to be due until our final critique date on May 5th. Um, and we are going to have, I believe, a live Zoom meeting at that time. So watch out for that email and let me know if you have any questions. Um, I think I'll do a big review next week. So you can, um, if you, if you, let me know your questions ahead of time. I can address them in the review. Have a good week.